Hello, my name is Peter Dimstra. I'm a senior at Calvin University studying geography. Today I am presenting on my summer research project. Using ground penetrating radar to investigate a sedimentary archive at PJ Hoff Master State Park under the mentorship of Dr. Melinda Higley. Ground penetrating radar, or GPR, is a non-invasive method of observing the Earth's subsurface using varying frequencies of radio waves. Lake Michigan's coastal dunes are ideal locations for implementing this technology because there is contrast in the sediment's conductivity. This study was conducted to investigate paleo wind directions and overall stratigraphy recorded in the sedimentary archive of a dune at PJ Hoffmaster State Park. The objectives of the study were create a record of the stratigraphy in Dune 2, a parabolic dune blowout at Hoffmaster State Park, map the spatial and depth variability of sediments in Dune 2 by collecting a GPR grid, establish extent of GPR signal penetration at this site. Our study area was Dune 2, one of several dune systems at Hoffmaster State Park, which is located on the west coast of Michigan. We used a variety of methods to collect GPR data at our study site, as seen on the map to the right. Over the entire study area, we observed two very strong and consistent reflective layers. I've highlighted them with blue and red on lines 3 and 4 pictured to the right. In lines 5 and 6, you can see the same two reflective layers. Here's an animation I created to look at the grid we collected. This shows the shallowest layer progressing downwards. In this animation, blue is indicative of low conductivity, while red is indicative of high conductivity. The GPR attenuation occurred at a shallower depth than expected. The cause of the contrast in the subsurface at this location could be due to many factors. There have been no drastic changes in the topography of the area we collected since the subsurface reflective layers closely mimic the surface topography. It's possible that the lowest reflective line represents an erosion surface associated with a lower lake level. To conclude, the blowout on this dune is at least as old as the surrounding dune features because of the continuous reflectors seen across the study area. We do not currently have enough evidence to say if changes in wind direction can be detected in this data set. Future work will need to be done in order to determine the cause of the shallower than expected attenuation. Thank you to everyone that made this project possible and thanks for listening to my presentation.